episode 29 of The Rundown. Kyle Stackpole, staff writer for the Redskins, here with Zach Selby, staff writer. We've got uh, Stevie Katz producing. And, you know, it's been two weeks since we've talked on this podcast. What's going on, Zach? What's new? It has been a long time, but I got two things, new things that are going on. Uh, one, I got a new desk, so that's why you have a different view in the background for me. There and you go. Two... If you're wondering, uh, hey, does Zach's hair look a little bit better than normal? That's the one. My hair looks always looks good, so let's go ahead and knock that out of the way. Oh and God. two, I got a bunch of new hair and skincare products. Uh, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I'll yeah, say so. it looks uh, like extra quaffed today. The quaff is on point. It's, yeah. it's, it's right there. I got, I got shampoo, conditioner, a face wash, a face mask, and Damn. some other like lotion and stuff. Okay. Yeah, you're really, you're really uh, you're pampering yourself during this quarantine, huh? You know, you know, somebody's got to. When you hear about yourself, you got to find ways to treat yourself. <laughs> for sure, dude. For sure. I mean, I actually also got a haircut. I think it was last week, um, and my girlfriend did it. Definitely didn't look the greatest at first, but it started to grow in. I think, I think it's doable. So, uh, well, that day two, that day two is when when the haircut like really starts to deform and really you get used to it. So exactly. I think that's, yeah, exactly. luckily, so, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have a girlfriend who's going to be cutting my hair and nobody's doing it outside of a, of a professional. So I'm willing to let it grow as long as it needs to until I get someone who's, who knows what they're doing to touch it. I got you. No, I agree. I'm definitely going to a, uh, definitely get my hair cut somewhere professional next time, but let's get back to football. Um, you know, since we last talked, we had, we've had some, um, we had the schedule release, obviously. We had the schedule release show with a bunch of different celebrities and players, Coach Rivera. Um, but I wanted to start with Thaddeus Moss. And Thaddeus Moss is a guy that we signed after the draft. He was a priority free agent, uh, LSU tight end. And so he had a press conference or a video mm-hmm. conference. And yeah. obviously that's not really normal for a – undrafted free agent to have a video conference but he's the son of randy moss pro football hall of fame wide receiver so if you haven't heard if you haven't heard about him so so he had a video conference yesterday he talked about a bunch of different things and i figured for the first segment we just kind of go over that so what do you think were the main takeaways from what moss had to say yesterday to the media well, I think one of the biggest things that I took away is that he takes it as a slap in the face that he was not drafted. And I think a lot of people really expected him to be. Um, I, and he definitely wasn't one of the top uh, tight ends available. But I do. I think a lot of people saw him go maybe like in the fourth to the sixth round, somewhere in that area. And if you look at him, mean, he had his best year um, last year with Joe Burrow and, and LSU. They won a national championship. They went undefeated. And he was a really good option for them. And – all of a sudden, he's <laughs> you know, after you know all the picks that that uh, that, that went through through the draft. He wasn't one of them, and I think that was a, definitely a, a humbling moment for him. And I think he's really ready to go out and prove himself. And that's the attitude he seems like to have. He knows that nothing's going to be handed to him. He knows that he's going to have to prove himself and earn a roster spot. But he seems to be really embracing it. And that's really what you got to have the attitude you have to have out of an undrafted free agent, priority free agent or not. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that brings me to my point about needing to prove himself. So he's heard all the comparisons and, you know, what's it like being Randy Moss's son and everything like that. And he, he understands it and he embraces the last name, but he doesn't want that to be, something that gives him anything additional in the NFL that gets him to place in the NFL just because his dad is Randy Moss. So I thought, because I think the yesterday the media asked him five questions about his dad and I think he took it. He was very humble. He handled it with class. Uh, I think all of his answers were really insightful. I think the main takeaway was that yes, he's Randy Moss's son, but he really wants to carve his own identity and, make a name for himself for Thaddeus Moss in the NFL. Uh, And there's actually the answer to one question um, that I think would be worth you guys hearing. So uh, we'll cut to that real quick. I don't get tired of the questions that, that doesn't, I'm not going to get tired of that. I'm just tired of the comparisons. Um, You know, I think I finally have reached that point 
um, where I am tired of the comparisons. Um, you know, everybody keeps mentioning my father, mentioning his last name, but, um, you know, just just identity, just identity I want to make is, you know, my own identity. Um, you know, I look forward to getting out there and making a name for myself and, you know, and, and just working for everything. So, yeah, so you, you heard that base boss uh, just talking about how he's tired of the questions and t uh, tired of the comparisons. So he really just wants to be his own player. And I think he really has a chance to uh, in this Redskins tight end room with there's a lot of different guys, but there's definitely – room to make a name for himself and, and try to get on the field right away. So, I mean, where, where do you see Thaddeus fitting in with the Redskins tight end and, and how do you think he's going to fare once they do get back on the field? Well, I do think that he's going to have a spot here somewhere. And I think off the Scott, off the corner, Scott Turner said that they're going to use two or maybe even three tight ends in one particular set. I think that he's going to be the third tight end um, in personnel settings. Uh, he, he possibly could be an H bag, you know, lined up behind the behind off the line as a as a blocker, or you know, maybe as an option somewhere, somewhere in somewhere as a pass catcher. But I do think he maybe could come in a, in a, in third downs. I think that would be a good option for him, third and short, maybe in the red zone. You have more options to use his physicality. So he definitely has a, a spot on the, on this team as to. I doubt he'll be a starter. I don't. I don't think. I think that Logan Thomas and Richard Rodgers both have an upper hand in that regard on him. But I do think that you use those. You have those skills that he has. You got to find a way to get him on the field. And Ron Rivera has shown he's willing to find. If you have talent, he's going to get you out there some way. Exactly. And just a couple more things, really quickly, on him. So. I think one of the reasons that he wasn't drafted was because at the combine, his physical revealed that he had a Jones fracture in his foot. So he wasn't able to compete at the combine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously pro days and official visits were canceled because of coronavirus. So he didn't get to show himself on the field at all. The only uh, people only really had his tape to go off of. So I think that was really a reason like the injury, um, that caused him to fall, that caused him to go undrafted. So I think because of that injury, he's ready to prove himself. He said he had surgery about a week after the draft, said rehab's going really well. He's ahead of schedule. And he really said, he said, when the pads go back on, they're going to know what I can do. So I think that Thaddeus Moss is, he's going to have a role on this team. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Probably a third tight end, like you said, but it's, it's going to be cool to see the son of Randy Moss you know, carve his own way in the NFL. Yeah, and a couple couple quick takes before we, before we wrap up this segment is, one, you know, obviously Randy Moss is going to be able to critique his son during games, and he said that's not any different than what I've had to experience my whole life. So <laughs> it can't be any worse than that. And, two, um, he – surprised. I wasn't expecting this. He, he, told, he told us the other two teams that, are in, that were interested in it, the Cincinnati Bengals mm -hmm. and the New England Patriots. The Bengals – Got Joe Burrow, the guy he had his best year with, and the Patriots, who, you know, their reputation obviously precedes themselves. So out of those two options, the guy, the quarterback that he knows and a historic franchise like the Patriots, he chose to come to the Redskins because they were the first team that was interested in him, and he really appreciated that. And I think he's going to come out, and he's going to give us the best that he can give whenever, we're, whenever training camp opens. Connect with the Redskins this offseason. Follow Redskins on Instagram and Twitter for team news, updates, and exclusive Redskins content. Sign up for FanDuel now and get $5 in total bonus. Just make your first deposit to get started, and you'll get an extra $5 in site credit. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Did you know that your Washington Redskins are sponsored by Coke Industries? That's K-O-C-H, Coke. Their 67,000 U.S. employees make a lot of things that make game day better. Greener turf? They make that. Stronger paper products for tailgating? They make that. Oh, and electronic components and TVs and smart devices so you can watch a Redskins victory anywhere? Yeah, Coke makes that too. See all they make for on and off the field at kochmakesthat.com. All right, so we are back uh, on the rundown, episode 29. So we talked about Thaddeus Moss, uh, one of four priority free agents the Redskins signed in addition to the eight draft picks uh, that they drafted this year. So, you know, free agency's over. 
we have the draft is now over. The next big thing was the schedule release that happened last Thursday night. And there's a lot of di- to digest. I mean, we knew who they were going to play, who their home opponents were, who they were going to play on the road. But now we know the exact schedule, when they're going where, when they're playing their division games. It's exciting. Uh, so, you know, what stood out to you? You know, what's your favorite part of the schedule? What's your hard- hardest part? I mean, just what are your general takeaways from – what the Redskins are in for in 2020. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper than, than what the, some of the other stuff. I'm going to pull up the just, – just so you know, we play a lot of really, really good quarterbacks in, the, in, in this upcoming season. So we have, we have quarterbacks with the, taken with the top two pick. We have six of those on the schedule. Wow. And we have quarterbacks who have been to a Super Bowl. You got four of those. And then you have three MVP caliber quarterbacks that are littered throughout the season. So obviously you have Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, but you also have Carson Wentz twice a year. <laughs> I mean, like that's going to be quite the challenge. I think this defense is going to be tested pretty, pretty often throughout this year. I mean, yet you you're going from a three four to a four three. You got a new defensive front with Chase Young out there. We're going to get to we're going to get to see how good this unit is. Everyone's talking about how elite this group can be, you know, with, with Chase Young, what he can do, and Montez Sweat, and Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, all that, all those other all those other players. And the good thing is about playing all those quality quarterbacks and those great offenses is that we're gonna get to see just how 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 much that lives up to expectations. So you said uh MV, MVP caliber. So who would you include with that? Well um so included uh, the obvious one which is Lamar Jackson. Won MVP yep. last year. Then you have Russell Wilson, also, and then you have um, Carson Wentz. Now the thing about Carson Wentz and Russell Wilson is that uh, Carson Wentz didn't necessarily win an MVP, but if you remember the year they they went to the Super Bowl and won, he was the leading favorite before he got hurt. Mm-hmm. So that's something to consider. And I'm okay. not necessarily I don't I don't think that Russell Wilson's won MVP. Yet. I'm pretty sure that he hasn't, but he's always up there in the conversation. I thought he did. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just. Maybe he's just been really close. Yeah, I'm. Pr- I'm pretty sure that he's always up there in the conversation. I don't think he's ever necessarily won any though, because you always have Tom Brady out in the discussion. You have um, uh, uh, the all the other the other five quarterbacks uh, that other top quarterbacks that are that are there as well. So I, I really don't think he's won any. And maybe yeah, I'm wrong. I just looked but, it up. I just looked it up. He hasn't. So that was surprising. Oh, but. Well. So I mean, but I was, out of my I was hat there. Assuming, yeah, I was just assuming that he had won one. Um, but I think Dak Prescott too. I mean, he's a guy that could be in that conversation. Um, so I mean, that that's a, that's a great point about the quarterbacks and just how. And not only is it going to be a test for the defense, but everyone looks at the quarterbacks, and it's always going to be Kyler Murray against Dwayne Haskins. It's going to be Baker Mayfield against Dwayne Haskins. So even though that Haskins isn't going up against these quarterbacks like mano y mano he's still going to be compared against them so I think it's going to be not only big to for the defense and the defensive line but big for Haskins can he keep up with these guys can he show that he belongs in that category with you know the promising young quarterbacks and then also the veterans who have really taken their game to a next to another level so I think those are both really interesting points yeah, I think I, I, you know I don't want to take away from from Haskins because this is obviously going to be a big year for him. I mean, you have a new offense, new offensive coordinator, new head coach. You have a bunch of nice new weapons to go to go and play with, and I mean, the, all the eyes are really going to be on him to see what he can do in this offense. But I will say that I just to defend the point a little bit more. This defensive line has has a big expectations. I mean, Huge, if you, yeah. I mean they've. They'd be compared to San Francisco 49ers about when and their elite group they had last year. So I think when you when you have those expectations, you gotta live up to them. But uh, what do you think? Is uh, what are your biggest ex, uh, takeaways from this from the schedule? Yeah, so I had a few, and it more has to do with uh, the opponents rather than like the mm-hmm. players on each side of the ball. So one thing I noticed is that they only have one division game in the first five weeks. And I think that's really a good thing because last year they had three division opponents the first four weeks. They went 0-3, and 
when you start 0-3 that early, it's really tough to get back into the division. Obviously, mm-hmm. that didn't happen, but just if you start 0-3, that's really deflating um, since that's obviously the best way to get to the playoffs. And so I think by having – they start with Philadelphia, but then have – four non-division games. I think that's going to be big as a team with a new coaching staff and a lot of young players really finds out how they mold together, how they work, uh, you know, which, which personnel, which plays work better than others. And then after those first five weeks, you have a really crucial stretch where you play at the Giants, home against the Cowboys, bye week, and home against New York. So I think it sets up really nicely – that they can get into a rhythm those first four weeks. And then Ron Rivera even said, he said, if you want to win the division, you have to control the division. And the fact that they have those four games within the first nine weeks really gives them a chance to go into that final stretch controlling their division if they can pull out those wins. Um, then the other thing, which actually I'll, let, I'll probably let you speak on, uh, everyone's been talking about the toughest stretch from week 12 to week 14. So you have at Dallas for Thanksgiving, at the Steelers, and at San Francisco. So I guess I was curious about, you know, what's your take on that? Um, how do you think that the Redskins will be able to navigate that um, that late in the season? Well, I think that that's going to be a really big test. I think I mean, you, look, you look at Dallas. I mean, Dallas has got one of the best offenses in the league. I mean, they have weapons all over the place. And then the Steelers, you know, you might think the Steelers are kind of a kind of an easier game. But honestly, they almost went to the playoffs last year without Ben Roethlisberger, mm-hmm. their Super Bowl winning quarterback. And then you have the San Francisco 49ers with Jimmy Garoppolo, the Super Bowl uh, appearing San Francisco 49ers. And I think all the Redskins fans remember them celebrating in the in the uh, the hurricane that was last year, celebrating in the rain, sliding on the mud and all that. I, I mean, those are all really big offensive and defensive tests um, for, for this team. And But – I will say this, if they can at least prove that they, that they can be competitive against those teams, then I, I think that, that, that shows a lot. I think that shows a lot for the growth of this, of this team, especially considering that, and just to go a little, bit, a little bit back to the division games, it's a benefit for them that all those division games are later in the season because by that point, this new offense and new defense is going to be going to be in their groove a little bit more. They're going to know how each other likes to play, and they're going to have a lot of teamwork and camaraderie going on. So you want to be at your best during that stretch of the season because who knows that could be a potential playoff push as well. So you really want to be the best you can be, and if you can get those three games, that means a lot. It'll go a long way. Exactly, and just just one more thing based on Ron Rivera had a bunch of comments and. I think one of his bigger points that stood out to me was talking about that stretch and how he's not really concerned about it because in his mind, they should be playing their best football at that point. Mm -hmm. They should have been learning, developing for these several months that once they get to those games, they need to be playing their best. And so why not test yourself against the best when you're supposed to be playing your best? So I think that, he's really going to harp into those guys knowing that that back half of the schedule, because once after that San Francisco game, then you go and host Seattle. That's not easy either. So that's, that's four games in a row that if, if the Redskins are going to make a playoff push, they're going to have to at least, I would probably say split those games maybe. Um, So I think that that's going to be really interesting, but also the division games earlier in the year, trying to get a feel for themselves. But it's gonna. It's a tough schedule. I mean, you have when you have the NFC West, there's really not a bad team in that division, and then you have the AFC North, and you have Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Obviously, Cleveland has got a lot of new pieces, and then Cincinnati has Burrow. So, it's definitely not a forgiving schedule. But I think there are places where the Redskins could pick up some wins. Seventy-five tons of game day trash and recyclables need to find a home. So when the final whistle blows, our team hits the field. As an official partner of the Washington Redskins, RTS is connecting FedEx Field with smarter waste solutions to ensure a more sustainable and responsible approach to what's left behind at the end of a game. RTS, a better waste company. Find out more at RTS.com. Whether from the sidelines or in the classroom, whether your chalkboard is for X's and O's or vocab words, 
whether you're a pro football coach or Mrs. Johnson at George Mason High School, the Washington Redskins believe in the power of great teachers. That's why we're partnering with youth entrepreneurs to bring Washington, D.C. teachers the resources they deserve. In response to the coronavirus pandemic, Youth Entrepreneurs has launched Teach Everywhere, a place for teachers to call home while adjusting to teaching at home. The resources contain distance learning activities, resources and tools, and a series of webinars from expert educators. Visit teacheverywhere.org to learn more. Everyone at Honda wants you to be safe. And right now, you need a car you can count on and your dealer to go the extra mile. So if your Honda needs parts or service, we're right here to help you. Working to follow all government guidelines in order to get you what you need and help you stay safe with a reliable car ready to go when you need it. Contact your local Honda dealer for more information. All right, so we're back. Talked about 2020 schedule, talked a little bit about the NFL draft and Thaddeus Moss. Now we want to implement a new segment. We haven't done this ever on the show, but we do it every week on the website with uh, Hail Mail. So we wanted to hear from you guys, from Redskins Nation and the questions you guys might have. And so we both posted on Twitter and got a bunch of responses. And so we're going to try to answer as many as possible before Stevie kicks us off and says there's no more time left. So I'm just going to start right away. Let's get the ball rolling here. Let's do it. Let's see. So we have, to start off, we have from the Tim's ST on Twitter. Obviously, our biggest question mark is the O-line, but are the linebackers another? Which line lineup do you think would give us the best look in our scheme? Zach, what do you think? Ooh, um, I don't necessarily think the linebackers are a position of need. I think they've got, I think they've got the talent that they want. Um, as far as a lineup, that's that's a very interesting question because you all they all have a lot of good talent in that position, and you're gonna look you're looking at one less linebacker as opposed to four in this new system. So I think the middle linebacker I would like to see what Thomas Davis Senior does. I think that he's been in the he's been with Ron Rivera the longest. He's the most experienced veteran, and he still finds a way to to contribute in some way. So I think you've got him at the Mike spot. In the oh, oh really at the middle linebacker. Yeah, I would put I him think. at the will. Okay. Really? I, now, see, for the will, I've got Cole Holcomb. I think Cole played a similar position last year. He had a lot of tackles, second on the team behind only Landon Collins. He, he has a lot of upside. And Rivera has pretty much said multiple times how much he likes Cole Holcomb and what he can do on the field and the different things he can do, whether it's uh, rushing the passer maybe a couple times or covering – or, you know, and covering different kinds of different kinds of players and receivers or tight ends. So I think he has the athletic ability to do that. As for the strong side linebacker, that is a very interesting question. I'm, I'm going to put John Bostic there. I think they brought him back for a reason. I think that he's, he's going to bring a lot of experience calling the plays from last year. And I think, I think he's got some ability. Now, he's not going to be in the same position that he was last year. But – I do think his experience is going to play a big role in the strong side position. So I've got I've got Holcomb, I've got Thomas Davis Sr., and I've got John Bostic as my starting three going forward. Okay. So I actually agree with you, but in all different spots. <laughs> so okay. I'm going to put Bostic in the middle, calling plays, put Thomas Davis at the will, uh, and put Cole Holcomb at the strong side. But I could really see – Ryan Anderson taking over that strong side spot mm, yeah. because you know he's a he's more of the you know the sure tackler he's going to be used as an edge rusher more so I think I mean John, Jonathan Allen talked a couple of weeks ago uh, to Kevin Sheen and he was saying that Ryan Anderson's a guy that he's poised to have a big year and he really stepped it up last year so I could even see I think that Bostic is going to be in the middle no matter what I could even see Thomas Davis starting and then maybe taking a reserve role and you have Cole Holcomb at the will and then you have and then you have Ryan Anderson strong. Wow. So there's a lot of options and that's not even mentioning Ruben Foster because if he comes back, he's another guy that can play the will that can play the middle linebacker spot. So that's a really good question. There are so many options, but I agree with you. I don't think it's a weak spot because they have a lot of different guys with a lot of different skill sets. It's just a matter of who's going to win out. So yeah. that was a really good question. Yeah. Next right, up, 
take oh you gonna do the next one uh, you can take the next one we'll all rotate. right all right we got this question here from uh from stun of showtime love that name how many <laughs> how many running backs make the roster and who are you guys picks at running back Oof. you want to start off with this one uh i think you should start out <laughs> all right okay so there are currently seven running backs on this roster and that's and that's definitely a luxury um, for certain. They will probably not have seven running backs on the roster. I would say, if I was going to venture a guess, I'd say they're probably going to cut that in half and keep it around four. I think, I think you know, I think that Adrian Peterson, Darius Geis, uh, Antonio Gibson are locks at, at, for the for the position. I don't know what else they're going to do. Maybe, maybe they have five. Now, Gibson does give you some flexibility since he does play a lot of different – he has plays receiver and running back. But I think, I think that's probably the way they're going to go. I definitely don't think they're going to keep seven. But for the starters, I think it's going to be a two-prong attack between Adrian Peterson and, and Darius Geis. I think that's what they had the most success with last year. And there's, they had no real reason to really go away from it this year. So – I think those I think those are your two, and then have the rest come in as complimentary pieces. I agree with that. I think I think the Redskins had four running backs on the roster last year going into the season. I think it's going to be five this year because Antonio Gibson can mm-hmm. he's kind of like a utility guy. So yeah. I think it's going to be AP Geis, Gibson, JD McKissick because he's kind of more of that like third down back. But who knows if if Antonio Gibson shows that maybe he can do that then that kind of puts McKissick uh, on the outside. But yeah. I think it's going to be five. Uh, yeah, Bryce Love in there, too, if I, if I didn't mention him. And I agree with you. I think it's going to be AP and Geis uh, splitting the carries, kind of like what they did against Carolina last year. But who knows? I mean, Bryce Love could step up. You could have Gibson step up. So that's a really fascinating uh, position group to follow. So next question is from... Anthony two two four eight nine five five four. All the numbers. <laughs> All the numbers. Do we have a slim chance of an eight and eight season and a wild card spot? What do you think? Well, I actually saw this question. I did a little bit of research. So I, originally, I thought, well, okay, I'll just look at all the teams and decide, you know, what what teams have gone on to make the playoffs after having a losing record last the previous season and then that was just too much so I decided to stick to the NFC East and all three teams have really done it a a fair number of times the Eagles have probably done it the most out of those and I think the most comparable to the Redskins three turn three and 13 season is Eagles in 2006 they went four and 12 and then made the playoffs and they since 2000 they've done it three total times Uh, the Cowboys have also done it once and that was in 2003 after they went 5-11. and 11. And then they have the Giants, who did it three separate times as well. So it's definitely possible. I think they've got they've, – history would say that they have a shot of doing it. I think there's enough talent on this team to really do that. 8-8 um, eight eight might be – I think, according to a lot of people, that might be a little bit optimistic. But I think, I think that's – I think they have a shot to do it, depending on how they, how they roll out the season. And with a seventh playoff, playoff position, I mean – who knows? I mean, that definitely doesn't hurt their chances. So I say with history on their side, I think with the seventh playoff spot, they have just a shot as anybody to get to get in there somehow. I agree with you. And for a lot of the same reasons, I think it's definitely possible eight and eight. I mean, I think they could even go nine and seven if they take advantage of the games that they you know are supposed to win or are close and then they steal a couple against those teams that we mentioned. So definitely mm-hmm. think it's possible, uh, especially with that defense. So, all right, next one. All right, I will take uh, this question here from Troy Dodd. Will Terry McLaurin get 10 touchdowns this year? Also talk about the last time the Redskins had a receiver with 10 touchdowns. I did actually did some research on this as well. Do you, do you know the answer to this question? The last time a receiver did it? Yes. I do, I do. Uh, 1991? Yeah, Clark. that's right. So we're thinking almost 30 years since, uh, since the receiver has had 10, 10. And there's only been, I think, one, one or two players since in that time span that's players in general who's caught 10 touchdowns. I think Jordan Reed did it in 2015. Yep. Yeah, so there's been 
So there's been eight players ever for the Redskins that have caught at least uh, 10 touchdowns. Yeah. Six receivers, two tight ends. Yeah, Jordan Reed did it in 2015. So there really hasn't been a lot of guys that have been able to do that. But Terry McLaurin missed two games last year. You had a rotation of quarterbacks. You had one of the worst offenses, and he still scored seven touchdowns. Yeah. So do you think it can happen? Can he become the first guy in 30 years, uh, first receiver in 30 years to do it for the Redskins? Well, he had seven touchdowns last year, and he missed two games. So <laughs> I think he's definitely got a shot at doing that. Um, so I think we got to pick it up right here real quick. Um, if you want to, you want to do one more? Let's just, let's do some rapid fire. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. So do you think Montez Sweat can be just as good as young? So give me a yes or no and why. Yes, I do believe that he can, given the fact that Chase Young is going to be on the opposite side. That opens up a lot of opportunities for him. So I think he's got a good, a chance to be as productive as young, at least in that first year. All right. So next question from at Bentley Haskins, who, who likely starts the left guard and left tackle? Okay. There's a ton of options. I think left guard is going to be Wes Martin, and I think left tackle is going to be Cornelius Lucas. What do you think? I'm down for that. Uh, I, I think that uh, – I think one, one way or the other, a Wes will be the starting left guard. Okay. I like that. And then last question we have from uh, the Tim's ST again. Love you sending in multiple questions. Do you believe Dwayne Haskins can be successful in this league as a starter? Yes, absolutely, 100%. I do believe that he has, given the weapons of it, that he has at his disposal this year, this coaching staff believes in him, and I think that he has a lot of confidence going forward into his second year. So I say, yes, he can be a successful quarterback in this league. I totally agree with you. I mean, it's only his entering his third year starting from college and the NFL. He showed a ton of growth last year. And I think with this new coaching staff, some more weapons, he can definitely be a uh, quality quarterback in this league. Cool. So that's it for the hail mail questions. If you have, I think, I think this was, people will like this and I think maybe we can try to do it going forward. Um, but if you have questions really anytime, reach out to either of us on Twitter um, and we'll try to answer them. But for now, um, just make sure if, if you like the podcast, subscribe, uh, rate, comment, wherever you get your podcast, you can watch us on YouTube. Watch us on uh, Redskins.com and the app. And then anywhere you get your podcasts, Spotify, uh, iTunes, or Apple Podcasts. So, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, you got anything else before we get out of here? No, I think we're good. I'm, I'm just uh, I'm excited to be back after two weeks of, of a hiatus. Let's, let's keep it. We had a good podcast today. Let's keep it rolling. Agreed. I think we got a lot of things done, answered a lot of different questions. Uh, so we'll see you next week for Kyle Stackpole. Zach Selby, Stevie Katz, this is The Rundown. Even though COVID-19 poses an unprecedented challenge, you can count on Novec to deliver reliable power and to help in other ways. Novec.com offers tips to save energy while spending more time at home. Novec customers can monitor their energy use online as well as pay bills through the website or by phone. And anyone can donate to help neighbors in need through Operation Roundup. Novak, power you can count on. I'm Robert Wilkie, Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. 155 years ago, President Lincoln called upon us to care for America's veterans. Today, you can help answer that call. We are looking for physicians, nurses, and other medical professionals to help protect veterans from the coronavirus. Go to va.gov slash join us or text VA physician or VA nurse to 97211.